I probably ought to explain this Spencer Out thing. This started a long, long time ago when I taught my first online class and I was recording lectures. They were audio lectures. And at the end of the lecture, I didn't know quite what to say. Um, do you just end? Do you say goodbye? Do you say over and out? Like I didn't know exactly what to say. So at the time, the one of the biggest shows on television was American Idol. And uh, it was huge. And uh, Ryan Seacrest at the end of American Idol started saying Seacrest out. And, uh, and then David Letterman, who I loved, started making fun of that. And he'd say, what's the guy's name? You know, Seagrave, Seagrave out. And uh, anyway, I thought that was all really funny. So I thought I'd start ending my videos with a Spencer out. And uh, it really caught on. I had no idea that I would, it would be so ingrained into me. I don't think I could record a video now without ending it with Spencer out. So there you go. That's where that all comes from. Anyway, done it for years and years and years. Well, let's, we talked about the different elements of this uh, program so far. So the program name is program.cs. That's the file name. The class name has to match that program name. They want those two things to be the same. I can't just call this blah because it's not going to match the, the file name, right? So I need to call this program to match. And then we have the class. The class is the container. And then the class has many different properties and methods in it. And the method in this case, we don't have any properties, but the method inside here is this main method, which is a private uh, method that's static, meaning it applies to the class itself. It's not returning anything. And again, we can put different types. What we can't do is just put nothing. It'll yell at us. We have to have a return type. And if we're not planning to return anything, then we put void saying this, this method doesn't return anything. But the last question mark we had was about what's in these parentheses. And this is the thing that's being passed to the class. And so what information, what variables are being passed into the class? And so let's take a look at this. Now this says string, which is the type. And then we have here the two brackets, an opening, closing, square bracket is what they're called. And what this indicates is that this is a string array. So typically when we declare a variable, um, the way I like to look at this is if you go out and buy a stick of memory, right? You have all these different slots, and we talked about this in the in the um, da the data structures, um, the data types video. Sorry, and we've got all these different little memory slots, right? Like we talked about. Well, a lot of times when we go in and just declare one variable, you know, I'm going to go get an integer, call it num, and set it equal to one. Then it goes out in memory, and we learned an integer is uh, 32. Uh, bits and so it's going to go out and reserve that space out in memory 32 bits long and then it's going to put into it a one because that's what we told it to and it's going to call it num well if i declare a string array called args then it's going to take and put out there instead of buying just one <laughs> space it's going to buy and the way I, I think about it in my mind is it's going to buy an apartment building so it's going to have a whole bunch of elements in here. And then it's just got different apartments in there. They're all the same size because they're the size of a string in this case. But we can have an integer array or a double array. And then every apartment gets a number. 0, 1, 2, 3. This is some high class content you're seeing here. 4, 5, 6. And the name of this apartment is Args. Think like a pirate. Args. So... We've got now a string array. It's all together bunched in memory, and the name of it is called args. It's an apartment building. So then when I want to get something out of the apartment, the way I refer to it is go out to args at space zero and set it equal to whatever, or go access whatever's in the apartment at args zero. And so arrays are super useful to us. They help us a ton to make things easier, but they are a little bit confusing at first. So I've got this string array called args. Well, how, do, how does something get passed into the main method? Because I don't even see an opportunity for it. When I run this program, it just pops it right up. In a second, it does. It says, hello world. 
right? There was no opportunity for me to pass in anything. So how does this apply? Well, this applies particularly if you're running this at the command line, because we can go in and say um, tools, command line, and I want you to do this, and then developer command prompt. So tools, command line, developer command prompt. And we're gonna instead run things at the command prompt. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in here and one of the nice things about going in that way rather than just pulling up command prompt is it puts you directly in the folder that you wanna be in. You need to be in the folder that you're accessing those files. And so a couple of commands you'll learn at the command line if you don't know them. One is a dir. So we can do a dir and we can pull up the directory of what's in there. So we can see all the files that are in this folder in, inside this path. And one of those files is our program CS file. And if you're not in this folder, if you accidentally didn't check that button earlier and you need to move around, you can do a CD, which is a change directory. You can do CD dot dot to move back a level. And then you, know, you can see what's in there. And now I see there's that C sharp fun folder. I can do a CD dot C sharp fun which will take me back into that folder, do a dir, I can see the files there. So those are some of the common commands. Now, if I want to compile the file, and so we have some languages that are interpreted, they just take on the fly and take your code and interpret it to binary. And we have some languages that are compiled. C Sharp is a compiled language. And so it's gonna take your English-like code that you've written up here and turn it into ones and zeros through this process of compiling it. And so the way that we compile a C-sharp program is we say CSC, that's the command to compile, and then the name of the file we want to compile. So in this case, we're going to compile program.cs. All right, so I run that, and it gives me an error. Now, this error is a little bit different. <laughs> you wouldn't typically get this, um, but because we are using the the .NET environment, it's trying to do things for us. And one of the things that's done is import a bunch of libraries that we need. So if I click on this little, uh, these little uh, um, braces up here, curly braces is the word I was looking for, then it will show us all the different things that it has imported. And so if I go click on system, it'll show me the little imports that it's done so that I don't have to type system dot console.writeline. I can just write console.writeline. So again, trying to save you time and, and help you out. Well, when I'm compiling at the command line, it doesn't have all that peripheral stuff. It just has um, what's in the program.cs file and there is no system in here. And so we need to actually go input system into this system.console.writeline to get this to work. So I'll save this. I'll come back to my command line. And then in here, you can press the up arrow if you don't want to retype. It gives you a history of all the different commands you've typed in. And so I'm going to compile the program.cs. And if I get nothing back, that's a good sign. That means that everything went well. And so now that it's compiled, if I do another dir, I'm going to notice there's a new file that we didn't have before, program.exe. That wasn't in there before but this is now the compiled file that's meant to be run. And so I'm gonna take this program.exe and I can run it. Program.exe and it gives me the hello world at the command prompt. Okay, so what if I want to actually use this string args? Well, I can put in parameters .exe. I can type in something like hello and one and uh, you know 13.25. I can put in some different parameters and each one of those is going to be put into a string array, each one separated out by a space. So it's gonna get the hello first, space, and then that'll be apartment zero. Then one will be apartment one, 13.5 will be apartment two, and so on and so forth as we add in parameters to this string array. All right, so what we're gonna do is just modify this string array so we can do some things with it as the information's passed in but uh, just here looking at my clock, I'm going to go ahead and end there and continue on with passing those parameters in in the next video. Spencer out.